How's it? Welcome along to Bezos Garage. Uh, today I'm going to show you how we make a front axle for a racing lawnmower uh, that comes in just under the one metre wide, so it fits within the um, New Zealand Lawnmower Racing Association rules for the front. Runs steel um, steel hubs because you've got to run steel hubs uh, and um, utilising parts that you can buy relatively easy. So what I'm actually doing is I'll show you how we make all this part up uh, and we'll maybe talk a little bit about the reasons behind it. Uh, Quick note to start off with, um, I don't make up the hubs in, the, in these parts, it's just not worth it for time and, and the money. So I buy these complete assemblies from uh, Go-Karts Direct and Tauranga, and I'll put a link in the description. Um, and this also comes with the tyres and the rims. Um, and then from uh, Motive Parts in New Plymouth, I buy the uh, hem joints, rod ends, whatever you want to call them, 12 more ones of those. So that's what I use to go on the side of here. Uh, and that, was, that means that if you if you damage your rim or damage one of these, whatever, you can buy a part and replace it and they're not very expensive, um, which makes it easier. And then what we've also done with these is we've set up what we call a, a 10 degree KPI, which is a kingpin inclination. So this is set at 10 degrees. The uh, hub itself is also set at 10 degrees so that when it's in the sitting flat, that's at 10 degrees and that's level. So it goes straight across. And then as you turn it, it drops down each way, which enables you to unload the rear axle and give you better turning ability. The other thing is with these pieces here, you can adjust them in or out. So you can slightly adjust the width. You can adjust if you want to put camber in there. Um, I don't bother with adjusting the caster. I set them up just as 10 degrees to start off with. If you wanted to adjust it, you could file them out, but I've never adjusted mine in the years that I've been racing, so I wouldn't bother. I just set it up like that, and it's a great starting point for getting uh, your mower going and getting out there and having some fun. So what we'll just talk about now is the uh, the steel that we use. So um, this here is a 40 by 40 box section, 3 mil thick, so it's pretty solid. And we use a 6 millimeter by 50 millimeter wide end plates that go onto there. Um, I haven't had one of these break on me. They're pretty solid. Uh, they're not like furniture tubing or anything like that. They're pretty solid. Uh, and I don't. I haven't seen one break yet. But hey, there's always a first time if you have a major accident that uh, could possibly happen. So, all right. So that's what we're going to end up with. So to start off with, you're going to cut yourself two pieces of this uh, six mil by fifty mil, and it's a hundred mil long. And then what you're going to do is you're going to get yourself a. Um, Sharp ruler, which I'm just grabbing now. So, I've got a ruler, and uh, I'm going to measure in 20 mil in and put a mark, and measure up 15 mil and put a mark. And then, what I do is I've actually got this here, which is set up to a um, 10 degree angle. Let me just double check that because I might have moved that from last time. So, I'll just Check that. Yep, no, it's not actually at 10 degrees at the moment. So we'll move that around to 10 degrees. So that's at 10 degrees. And then what we do is we lay this on here. And then we find where that original mark was, which is there. And then we draw a line up at the 10 degrees. And then we measure 68 millimeters between there and there. The reason it's 68 millimeters is because we have on here we have a couple of spaces. You can see the spaces here and here, and this means that A, you've got more uh, ability to adjust the, the nuts and bolts, you can get into them easier, but also what it means is you could potentially change the height of the axle if you wanted to by moving the uh, by moving the washers that are in there as well. So once you've drawn up and done these couple of marks here, what we'll do is we'll go over to the, uh, the vise over there, and we will pin a pin punch it, and then we will drill them. Right, so we've got the little marks we've got there. Always pin punch them. So we'll put it onto the right mark and give it a smack with a hammer. And then we'll do the same on the top one there. What that does is it gives us the two marks that we can quite easily see. And then we'll go over to the drill press and we'll drill the holes. We're here at the drill press and we need to drill the holes in here. Now we've pin punched them. Now what I tend to do is I drill a pilot hole, which is about four mil. Then I put another one through, which is about eight. And then I put the 12 mil through. Now each of these have different speeds, so um, we need to adjust the speed as we go through. So we'll show you how that works. We've got the 4 mil, put it up into the chuck here. Oh, into the chuck. Okay, 
And then what I do is I wind this down till it just goes into the center punch. Sits there nicely, and then we clamp it. Okay, get a little bit of cutting oil on there. And then we start the drill up. It's going slow, so I'm going to speed that right up. So we're speeding it up to 12, 1300 RPM. We bring it down, and should drill through relatively easily. Right, and then we do the same thing on the other end. I might just drop that drill down a little bit. All right, and then we'll do the same thing at the other end. Take the clamp off, make sure it's all clear underneath. Bring this down onto the, the hole that we clamp. A little bit of oil on there, a little bit of cutting oil, start it up again, and then we go through. Okay, that's the first one done. Take that out. Now we'll go for the 8mm. Put the 8mm in. Alright, 8mm's in. Again, a little bit of cutting oil on there. Now we've just slowed the drill down, so I'm going to bring it back to about 9800. Okay, set so that one down, then we'll do the other end. Turn it around, same until we've done the, done the drill. Clamp it down, a little bit of oil. So that down a little bit more actually. Okay. And now we'll put the 12 mil through, which is the last one. Tighten that up, a bit more oil on there, and I need to slow this right down now. Slow it right down, it's about 450-500. The speeds make quite a difference to how the drill cuts. So it's important to get those those speeds. They don't have to be super accurate, but you want to get them as close as you can. Alright, a bit more cutting oil on there. And there we go. Right, done deal. Easy as. Okay, so we've now got two of these plates made. Two holes cut and they line up pretty well, so it means you must have measured pretty accurately. Um, I always think these are really awesome. A deburring tool, stick it in here, give it a couple of goes around there, and this just cleans out the holes and just makes them um, easier for the bolts to go in. But it also looks tidier and more professional when it's finished, so I quite like that. So if you, I don't know if you can see that there, but it sort of burred them around the edges, looks quite tidy. Uh, I'll do the same for this one. These are relatively cheap to buy and the blades come in packs of five or six and they last a long time. Um, I don't know what we're having. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make these look a bit tidier, take the edges off them. So I'll just turn on the old here.
Right, all that does is just take the wedges off, sharp edges, give them a bit of rounded, just makes it look a bit tidier. Okay, so those are ready. Um, now we need to move in the next bit, which we're going to cut up the uh, the main frame. Alrighty, good old hacksaw here, um, not too expensive to buy, uh, use it all the time, love it. Um, set it up for 5 degrees, so I've set this at a 5 degree angle, and I've checked it with a, uh, with a protractor, so I'm pretty happy with that. Now, this piece here is our 3mm by 40mm um, piece, it's 600 long. So the plan here is we've cut the end square, so I know that's good. Now we're going to cut the two diagonals, so it means you only have to do two diagonal cuts and then it's basically made. So, we're going to put this into here, and we need to measure 140mm in. So, we'll come into 140mm, which should be somewhere about... Uh, Oh, it's playing up on me. It's about there. So all I'm going to do is now set up the saw to cut the 140. So the 140 is the long side. So that's pretty well right in there. Right, now we're going to hacksaw through this. Okay, so we flipped it over, we've got that end is the uh, cut end, we want to make sure that we've got it at the right angle, so it should be opposite to the other end, and then this is the bit we've already cut off, so all we do is lay this on top of here, bring it down till it's flush with there, and then push that up till it touches the blade, uh, make sure it's sitting pretty flush, which looks pretty good to me, tighten it up, just have a quick double check, yep, all happy with that, and then we'll do the other cut. Alright, so we've got these three pieces cut, we've got the two end pieces cut, now we want to match them up so we know which way the angle is. Um, so we've got that sorted there, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put them in the vise. Uh, this is just so I can mark the centre, so when I line them up and weld them, they'll be in approximately the right place. So we we'll grab this, and we'll, so that's 100mm, and 50 is half, so that gives us half of that. We also need to measure the centre of these so that we can line them up as well. So these are 40 and then we want 20 and the same on this end. We want to measure this one and we want to go 40 and we want to go 20. Right, so that just gives us something to mark it up with. So now what we do, put this on the nice flat plate, get a couple of these um, these things here, plonk that next to that. That holds it pretty well on there. It'll be the same at this end. Plonk the two together. Then we get these. This one goes down this end and sits up against there. Right. And then we do the same at this one. We put the angle on here, so it goes up against there. So what this does is it holds it all flush on the bottom. Sits all nicely, we just make sure we hold it in there when we do that. Same with this end, we'll just make sure we've held it right up here and it's flush on there. Alright, so that's basically ready to tap now. So we'll turn the welder on. So we're just going to tap these in place for the moment.
Okay, so that's all sorted. So now we need to weld the other bits on. So we already know where they're going to go. So we'll end up getting out the small ones of these. We've got some 5mm plate because this is 50mm and this is 40mm. So there's a 5mm difference in the size. So we're going to put this underneath here and underneath here. And then we're going to grab a clamp. Underneath here. So what that does is it holds it square and flat. We grab this piece and this piece, stick that on there, clamp that against the edge of that so it holds it square, and then we're going to line up with the center of there. Okay, that should be pretty close. And now I'm going to tack that one. Same thing at the other end. And just down to that end. Clamp it up like we did before. Same with this piece. Now we want to make sure that we're the right way round. So we've got the same way as that one, and then we're going to put that on the end of here and do the same thing with this. Line it up, make sure it's square, sitting flat, and then we're going to tack that one as well. that's ready to be welded. So all I will do that now is I will do the finished welding uh, and the finished welding will then end up looking like this one over here which I'll bring around end up looking like this one which is fully welded um, and it's ready to go. So the only thing you have to do with these when you get them is if you know your wheelbase let me know before I send it to you and I can set up your Ackerman if you don't know your wheelbase what you've got to do is you've got to cut across here and you've got to bend the arm in so that the point from there through the center to the center of your axle is in line with that okay so all you do is you cut that bend it out and then re-weld it and that will get your Ackerman right for your vehicle okay so um that's the front ends now i am selling these um flip the message uh, jump onto my uh, Facebook page, I've now got a Facebook page that I've made up, so jump on the Facebook page, uh, the YouTube channel as well, subscribe, click the bells, all that sort of stuff, um, and we'll see you next time on Business Garage.